The American military has just made a game-changing decision, one that is sending tremors throughout the entire firearms industry. They have officially signed off on a brand new combat round for our frontline troops, and it is not the one that most folks have been arguing about. While shooters everywhere have been debating whether we need heavier bullets for knockdown power or lighter ones for mobility, the military brass took a different route entirely. They picked something that rewrites the entire rulebook. This is not a slight update to our existing gear. This is a full-on revolution in how American soldiers will deliver firepower. We are talking about a new breed of cartridge, built from the ground up for the harsh realities of 21st century warfare. What follows is my take on what this new round truly means, not just from the headlines, but from real-world experience. I've been on the range with these systems. I've followed the doctrinal shifts, and I've tracked this technology from its prototype phase all the way to a field-ready weapon. Let's break down the new caliber that is poised to reshape modern combat. The Big Reveal, 6.8 by 51 mm also known as 277 Sig Fury. Here it is. The round that has just been cleared for duty is the 6.8 by 51 mm also known in the civilian world as the 277 Sig Fury. And no, this is not 300 blackout. And it is certainly not some obscure Wildcat cartridge that was cooked up in a custom ammunition lab. This is the real deal. A purpose-built cartridge with serious battlefield potential. We are looking at a 140 grain bullet, moving at around 3,000 feet per second. That translates to close to 2,800 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. To put that into perspective, your typical 5.56 NATO round generates about 1,300 foot-pounds less than half the punch. But what really sets this round apart is the pressure at which it operates. 80,000 pounds per square inch. That is not a typo. Most rifle rounds top out at around 60,000. To make this work, the engineers at SIG built a hybrid case. Steel at the base and brass around the body. The steel base keeps the case from blowing out under that extreme pressure, while the brass body allows for consistent, clean extraction. That is not just clever, it is absolutely essential. Without that combination, you simply could not push this kind of performance without wrecking the chamber or beating the bolt to death. In terms of range, this cartridge changes the game entirely. It holds lethal energy well past 600 meters, and it still hits harder at 1,000 yards than the 5.56 does at half that distance. That is not an upgrade. That is a complete redefinition of capability. You are no longer limited to medium-range engagements. You are now engaging targets with fight-stopping power at distances that most infantry rifles never even dreamed of. This is not just about a new bullet. It is about changing how fights unfold in the field. Our troops will now have the power to shut down threats before they can get close enough to be dangerous. It is a new kind of dominance. Reach, impact, and reliability all in one package. Long reach, heavy hits. So why walk away from the old standard, the 556 NATO? It is simple. It no longer meets the needs of today's battlefield. We are not just facing insurgents in light clothing anymore. We are up against near peer adversaries who are wearing level three and level four body armor. And against that kind of gear, the 556 just does not cut it. Unless you get very lucky or you land a dozen rounds center mass, you are not getting through. The field reports kept coming back with the same consistent message. American troops were getting outranged and outmatched. They needed too many hits to drop an armored target. And that is not a shooter problem. That is a failure in terminal effectiveness. The 556 was designed for a different era, for short range jungle fighting, where lightweight rounds and a high volume of fire were king. But modern combat demands something else, overmatch. That means outranging, outpenetrating, and outhitting your opponent in every single measurable way. And that is exactly what the 6.8 by 51 millimeter does. It gives you speed, it gives you punch, and it gives you the ability to break through modern body armor at extended ranges, even past 600 meters. So, instead of dumping entire magazines trying to get a stoppage, now a trained shooter can end a fight with just one or two well-placed hits. This is not about putting more lead in the air. It is about making every single round count. Why ditch the 556 NATO? Let's compare this new cartridge to what we have already got. First, the Old Faithful 556 NATO. 
it has been in service since the Vietnam era. It has light recoil, it's easy to carry, and it allows for high ammunition loads. A 62 grain M855A1 round weighs about 12 grams, and the recoil lands in the 4 to 5 foot pound range. That means a soldier can carry seven full 30 round magazines with no problem. Then, there is the 762 NATO. It packs a lot more energy, about 2,400 foot pounds from a 147 grain projectile. But each round weighs about 25 grams, and the recoil jumps up to around 18 foot pounds. That adds up fast, in both the weight you have to carry and the fatigue you experience when you're shooting. So, where does the 6.8 x 51 land? Right in the sweet spot. It weighs about the same as a 7.62 round, but it pushes out nearly 2,800 foot-pounds of energy while keeping the recoil closer to 15 foot-pounds. It kicks more than a 5.56 for sure, but it is absolutely manageable with good training. Yes, the new XM7 rifle runs on smaller magazines, usually 20 or 25 rounds, but each shot hits so much harder, you simply do not need to pull the trigger as often. This shift moves the focus from quantity to quality, hitting hard, hitting fast, and finishing the job in fewer rounds. And in terms of range, it is no contest. The 556 starts running out of steam past 300 meters. The 762 NATO holds up until around 800 meters. But the 6.8 by 51 millimeter? It remains lethal well beyond 600 meters, and it stays supersonic even farther out. How it measures up against existing rounds. This new cartridge does not just tweak some stats on a piece of paper. It fundamentally transforms how our ground troops will operate in combat zones. Picture this. You are a team leader, and you catch movement half a click out. If you are running a 5.56, your instinct is to suppress and maneuver, hoping to close the gap. But with the 6.8 by 51 millimeter, you do not hesitate. You line up your shot, you take it, and you know that it is going to hit with authority, still packing fight-stopping punch at that distance. That flips the entire tactical approach on its head. You are no longer just dumping rounds to gain control. You are making each shot count with a level of precision that wins the fight faster. Now, toss in the new generation of suppressors, which are factory standard on these new rifles. The benefits are numerous. Less flash, quieter reports, and cleaner communications across the entire squad. It also makes it much, much harder for the enemy to figure out where your fire is coming from, which, in a real firefight, can be the difference between dominance and disaster. Then, there is the XM157 optic system and do not call it a scope. It is a full-blown digital fire control unit. It automatically ranges your targets, it corrects for wind and for drop, and it factors in the temperature and the air pressure. It is like strapping a ballistic calculator and a sniper-trained spotter right onto your rifle. Paired with the incredible ballistics of the 6.8 cartridge, it gives our troops the tools to land solid hits far beyond what we used to think of as standard rifle distances. Even though the troops are carrying fewer total rounds, those rounds do more work. Less volume, more outcome. Sure, the recoil is a bit stiffer, but with proper training, it is absolutely controllable. And when our troops see what this round does to body armor at 600 yards and beyond, they will not want to go back. There is also the confidence factor. When a soldier knows that their rifle can punch clean through plates, and hit hard before the enemy can even effectively return fire, that belief turns into battlefield initiative. And that is what wins engagements, what it means for the warfighter. This is not just a caliber swap that is being dropped into our old rifles. It comes with an entirely new generation of weaponry, engineered to withstand the extreme pressures that this round creates. First up, the M7 rifle. Designed to replace the M401, this is a short-stroke, piston-driven system that was built from the ground up to tame 80,000 pounds per square inch of pressure. This is not your dad's direct impingement rifle. It ships standard with an integrated suppressor and features controls that will be familiar to anyone who is used to the AR platform, which keeps the learning curve shallow. Then, there is the M250 light machine gun, which is replacing the long-serving M249, this new belt-fed beast slings the 6.8 round with authority well past 600 meters, 
and it features significant weight savings and recoil dampening technology to help our gunners stay on target. It is not just for laying down covering fire anymore. It can deliver precision support at distance with serious punch, but new gear is only half of the equation. The training pipeline is also undergoing a major overhaul. Ranges on army posts are being extended out past 1,500 meters. We are no longer just talking about shooting bursts at 100 yards. Now, it is about precision marksmanship beyond one click. And our soldiers are learning how to operate these advanced optics, how to manage the ballistic software, and how to integrate rangefinders and sensors into every single engagement. Shooting is no longer just about pulling a trigger. It is about running a data-driven weapon system. Today's infantryman is not just a rifleman. He is the operator of a precision combat platform. And that shift is already making our troops deadlier, more effective, and more confident in the field. New platforms, new doctrine. Every time the military adopts something new, the civilian shooters sit up and take notice. The commercial version of this cartridge, the 277 SIG Fury, is already hitting the shelves. And let me tell you, it is a monster. With a 140 grain projectile clocking in at around 3,000 feet per second, this round carries some serious long range energy. You want a cartridge for punching steel at a thousand yards or for dropping an elk at extended ranges. This is it. Hunters, especially, are watching this one very closely. The 6.8 offers a flat trajectory, a high retention of energy and terminal performance that makes many of the traditional hunting calibers start to look a bit dated. It gives you the ethical power to drop big game like a moose or a boar, even from five or 600 yards out. But here is the catch. This is premium grade stuff. The hybrid case design with its steel base and brass body makes reloading complex and drives up the production cost. This is not just another 308 clone. Right now, the availability is limited to just a few rifles, like some bolt actions and SIGs cross series that are chambered in 277 Fury. Reloaders can work with it, but you will need specialized tools and the knowledge to handle those steel components safely. Still, as the military contracts scale up, the civilian options will continue to expand. More rifles, more load variations, and better pricing are all on the horizon. And if this hybrid case technology really catches on, we might be looking at the future blueprint for all next generation ammunition design. Myth busting the 6.8. Now, let's clear up some of the nonsense, because the internet is already full of bad takes on this new cartridge. Here is the truth, from someone who knows the real-world side of shooting. Myth number one, a smaller caliber equals a weaker round. Nope. While the 6.8x51 might sound smaller than a 7.62 NATO, it hits much harder. It has more muzzle energy, a faster velocity, and significantly better penetration. And it is definitely not a step down from a 5.56 it is in another league entirely. Myth number two. This is just recycled World War II technology. Not even close. While the bullet diameter may resemble some of the older hunting rounds, this cartridge operates at pressures that most of those older cartridges could not even dream of. The hybrid case, the high PSI threshold, and the fire control integration make this a thoroughly modern solution. Myth number three. We did not need a new round. Go ask the troops who have dumped entire magazines of 556 five, into enemies who were wearing ceramic armor and then saw them keep on fighting. This was not a theoretical problem. It was a real and persistent issue in our combat zones. And myth number four, it is too heavy to carry enough ammunition. Sure, each individual round is heavier, but that is not the point anymore. You are not trying to blanket a target area with fire. You are landing precise, effective hits that matter. Fewer rounds, greater effect. That is the new doctrine. The bottom line is this. This cartridge answers a very real capability gap that has existed for years. It is not a gimmick or an overreaction. It is the natural next step in maintaining battlefield dominance. As the threats we face continue to evolve, and as our combat ranges continue to stretch, the 6.8x51mm is the tool that our American troops need to stay ahead of the curve and to stay alive. Looking ahead, a new era of small arms. 
The 6.8 by 51 millimeter is not just a new cartridge. It is the spark that could ignite a full-blown overhaul of modern military small arms. Right now, the United States Army is leading the charge, but make no mistake, the rest of the Department of Defense is watching very, very closely. If this round performs as advertised in real-world combat, it is only a matter of time before the other branches begin rolling it out as well. But one major hurdle remains, NATO interoperability. For over four decades, the 556 NATO round has served as the common thread that ties our allied logistics together. Shared ammunition, standardized magazines, and a global supply chain have made coalition warfare much simpler. But the 6.8 throws a wrench in that system. Its hybrid case construction and its 80,000 PSI pressure requirement mean that you cannot just run it through the existing production lines. It demands a completely different infrastructure, one that most of our NATO partners simply do not have yet. So now, our allied forces are facing a crossroads. They can either continue to rely on the legacy cartridges or they can invest in their own high-pressure hybrid solutions. This could mark the beginning of a next-generation arms race, not in the numbers of weapons, but in their ballistic capabilities. On the civilian side, this shift is already rippling out. Long-range shooters, hunters, and competition marksmen are all keeping a close eye on the 277 Sig Fury. The performance is undeniable. And as the military demand drives the production scale, we can expect to see more rifle options, a broader variety of factory loadings, and eventually, yes, lower costs. But the real game changer here is not just this one cartridge, it is the hybrid case technology itself. Once the manufacturers figure out how to mass produce these dual metal cases efficiently, we might start to see a complete reimagining of our classic calibers. Think about giving old standbys like the 243 Winchester or the 308 a new lease on life pushing higher velocities, flatter trajectories, and better terminal ballistics, all without changing the bullet profile. In short, this is not just a round for today's battlefield. It is the opening move in what could become a complete reinvention of rifle ammunition as we know it. So, here is where I will leave you. Is this new round truly the future of infantry arms? Or is it just one milestone on the road to something even more advanced? Would you run this caliber in your own rifle, or do you think the proven war horses like the 308 still deserve their place at the top? If this breakdown gave you a clearer picture of what is coming down the pike, be sure to give us a like, drop a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel for more no BS deep dives into weapon systems, ballistics, and tactical innovation. Until next time, keep training, keep thinking, and stay ready. This is Wise Gunner, signing off.